You're watching FullFlap.tv and I'm Vicky Ferrer. If you have a look at the clock on our main website, you'll see it's clicking down to our new season. We're nearly ready and we have so much in store for you, although you'll have to wait one more week till the 12th of January. If you haven't signed up yet for the email updates, it's still free, so just check out www.fullflap.tv for details. Tonight, another one of our greatest hits from 2008. <laughs> I'm at Kunovica in the Czech Republic. Yesterday it was five degrees Celsius. Today it's even colder. And I've got a cold. The Czechs have always been good at making things in the past military aircraft, but now things to play with. This is my logbook, and if you're prepared to read through it and ignore the typos or if I have to scrub it out because I can't add up the minutes properly, you'll find that I've only actually got 74 hours and 35 minutes of flying time. In fact, the number of aircraft that I've actually flown, you could count on one hand. In fact, let's do that. We've got a Cessna 152, a Cessna 172, and a PA-28. The point is, I've only actually flown three different aircraft, so I have virtually no experience at all, which means that I'm perfect for the job. The Sport Cruiser was never targeted at the ultra-experienced jet jockey Uber pilot. So who was it built for? This was built for you and me. If you say you fly light aircraft in the bar, people are probably going to wonder why you would put your life on the line in something made of balsa wood and toilet paper. And they'd probably be right to be worried if it was like that. But this light aircraft is probably going to install confidence in your bar buddy and even get them flying. Being a light sport aircraft, you only need a light sport license or NPPL or whatever the easier to get licenses in your country to fly it. That makes things cheaper, but does it also mean you get less plane? Well, let's start with the engine. Yeah, it's got one. And it has wings, good. And it's got a tailplane too. Great, that's done with the aerodynamics. What about the fun stuff? What sort of speed can I get out of it? Well. Uh, the speed is uh, about 115 knots, which is a, about 130 miles an hour, which is about 220 kilometers an hour. Yeah, not bad. What about the cost? Well, we could talk about cost, but let's go flying first. So what are you going to see when you take off? Well, I thought I'd give you a bit of a pilot's eye view of what it looks like out the front, just to give you an example of the visibility. Just racing down the runway right now and that doesn't take very long to get off the ground. Now, I know the purists amongst you are probably wondering things like what's the lift drag ratio and stuff like that, but I want to ask something even more important. What's two hours in a Cessna 172 or a PA-28 like? It's obviously fantastic fun, but it also tends to mean that your bum will hurt. When it comes to the bum test, they're not exactly the most comfortable aircraft. What's this one like? If you're not a pilot yet, you'll find that many old planes feel like going to watch a bad movie in an old cinema. You fidget around, fighting for arm space with the person next to you, making economy class on some airlines seem positively spacious. Hmm. Actually, when it comes to the bun test, that's pretty good. So I just want you to see how much space there actually is in here. You know what a 152 is like, don't you? And you've got, you basically, normally, normally you've got your arm over your instructor like that. But in this particular case, I think we can quite comfortably sit here together, can't we? Yeah, we are very comfortable. Yeah. You're just looking around, but you can see on the, the helmet cam that everywhere I look, you can see. I just can't get enough of this canopy. It's got to be one of the best in GA. It actually feels a little bit like you're outside. No seat adjustments either, so you might need another cushion. But then it sounds like many sport cruiser pilots use one anyway, which probably actually helps you catch even more of the view. Just think, you're flying along normally and you say to your friend, oh look, there's a castle over there. You can see one bit through that window and a bit more through that one. All you have to do here 
is sit back and go, wow. <laughs> what, what's that castle called? Uh, uh, Bukhlov Castle. Uh, of course. Wow. It looks and flies like a real aeroplane. Um, everything else is sort of quite inferior now and looks and flies like a microlite. Nothing against microlites, but this is the next generation. Let's talk figures. You're going to need 360 feet for the takeoff roll. That's 110 meters, with landing a little more at 400 feet or 122 meters. And we may be on tarmac today, but it's strong enough to land on grass strips or by the side of a hard runway if you completely fail to hit the black stuff. But what's it like when you bring it to a stop in the air? Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's pretty slow. That's 40 knots. And that seems pretty steady, doesn't it? There we go. The airspeed said yeah. 34 there goes knots. The What's the advantage of having a big wing? Uh, first thing, uh, you see uh, the stall speed is very low. Yes. And also you can uh, put a lot of uh, luggage in it. You know, a useful load is great. You can put about uh, 60 kilograms total of luggage. No, that's, a, that's more than a commercial jet, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So I can carry more in here than I had to... What, it was 15 kilograms I was allowed on Ryanair when I yeah, flew yeah. to the Czech Republic. So I can carry four times that much. That's, that's right. It's a pretty good package, right? There's a catch. In some countries, you'll have to finish building this plane as a kit. And if, like me, you really can't be bothered, this might be the point where you give up on this aircraft. But let's say you do try. They've spent a lot of time writing a detailed idiot's guide manual for this, and it could save you a little money. Realistically, then, if you want to go from the kit to a basic aircraft, yeah. nothing flashy, just well, something flyable and safe, you could do that what? Three well, months, what used four to months, be, average? What used to be um, between, between a, a couple of years and infinity. Yeah, which is or, crazy. Or uh, between... Um, one or two or three or five thousand hours. Yeah. Because now, now we're not talking years. We're talking weeks and months to complete an aircraft. Right. So it's really a short-term project. The person getting in his airplane should be flying it the same year easily. If your country insists on you finishing it yourself, then it might be worth checking the classifieds. You never know. There might be someone who recently built one that suddenly decided they no longer wanted it and would in fact like to sell it to you. And don't forget, Europe looks set to change the rules real soon too. So if you live in some countries, you'll finally be allowed to do what others can do already and buy a finished, factory-built, ready-to-fly sport cruiser. So what is it like when your hands are on the controls? Very, very sensitive. Now, if I just do a very, very gentle bank to the right... Beautifully smooth air tonight, beautifully smooth. And in fact... Quite heavy on the aeronaut, but it's you literally just have to lean on it to get it to turn. And then if I just put it back the other way again, really you just have to press on it more than anything. And that's quite steady. Let's talk about money. It'll cruise at 115 knots, it's got a 114 litre fuel tank, fill it to the brim and you can do over five hours and around 700 miles for around $200 or 200 euros. And many people often ask what would happen if the engine fell? Do planes fall out the sky? No, it's nothing is changed. The gliding is, you know, we, are, we have half of the flaps, you know, we have uh, just 20 degrees of flaps and uh, it's a lot of time so if the, your engine stops, no panic, because it's a lot of time. You have, you can smoke together. Actually, it glides really well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it glides very nice. And that's just like a normal landing, eventually. It glides a long way, doesn't it? Yeah. I can't say I've done that before. I love this plane. It feels solid, it's cheap to run, it's got the most amazing canopy. It may not be the fastest, but it'll still leave a 152 or PA-28 crying in its vortex in a drag race. But this is the really exciting bit. Aviation used to be a minority hobby, there's no denying it. You either had to have plenty of funds or share a flimsy plane with 10 friends. Basically, if you could afford a Ferrari, you could afford to fly. But that's all changed. If you can afford a reasonable family car, you can afford to buy one of these. Not a flimsy plane, but a full-blooded aircraft that even your grandma would get in. 
share it with just one friend and it becomes within the reach of absolutely anyone. You could buy a sports car and you could sit in traffic jams. Plus, after three years, it'll have lost half its value as well. Now, if you maintain the Sport Cruiser okay, it'll hardly lose any value. If the reason for giving up your PPL is because it's all too expensive, then the Sport Cruiser might be the argument that persuades you otherwise. So forget the old spy movies. It's places like this where the new era in aviation is being created. So this is it for 2008. The new year is nearly here. I hope you're getting ready for some great parties this week. Most of the team are spread around the world at the moment, so if you see them, please forgive them. I'll be here next week for our last Christmas special before we get underway for the new year. I'm Vicky Ferrer, and you're watching FullFlap.tv.